right so this guide is for OET medicine right and the purpose of this guide is to cut down on the time that it takes to understand what OET is and to collect resources because it took me around two days to just understand what it is and collect the resources okay um, so where do you start it so first if you need to know more information you can watch this video right here Second, I would recommend you go ahead and sign up on the OET website and look at the dates available in your area. Don't worry, um, it does not save your progress on the website. So if you exit it, it just closes and you have to start over again next time. So you can go get to this window and uh, see what the dates are available. And in case there are no dates available and you have to make any further arrangements to do your OET testing in another city, uh, you have that in your idea in your head as well. So now that you look at the dates uh, available and the timings, um, you have a deadline in your head. So with that, you can go ahead and basically look at what OET is about. So OET and the actual test, you will have two cards that you will be doing. And for speaking, it's 20 minutes exam. Okay. Um, it's out of 500 so you need uh, 350 or above in it okay uh, listening uh, it's 50 minute exam there are part a b and c and you need a score of 30 out of 42 or 350 for it um, reading same thing 350 30 out of 42 a b and c and writing again uh, this thing you need only 300 instead of the 350 um, and where you will be writing a letter and the letter they give the give you the prompt for it okay uh, speaking how do you start it so watch the e2 link okay so this link right here so you understand what speaking is uh, and how they grade it and all that stuff uh, then there are sample tests on OET website okay so you can this is the OET website click there and here by profession medicine okay um, so right there and there should be okay yeah so sample one two three four and five okay uh, for the sample one and two there are people who already I think OAT themselves did the role play so this is uh, test one role play so you can watch that video here um, following the card and this is a two and this is one and two both together from someone else and there are a lot of lot more uh, examples however um, these role plays don't actually feel like what their actual exam feels like and the actual exam it's very straightforward you don't have to make up words you don't have to role play and act just follow the cards um, line by line if it says find out something then you just be like can I know you know something like that um, here I added a few notes like be casual talk normal uh, as if the you don't have a card right don't be like hello my name is what's your name be like hello I'm doctor this um, can you confirm your name for me okay so that's how you start off and I would suggest that you make a template of in a, on a paper or your notes that you follow for each and every uh, card that you practice. So if you have a set intro, it's going to make it easier for you to go through the cards. Once you establish the name, because they really want the relationship building part uh, for you to establish that. Okay. Um, so these videos will go through that as well. Um, these are the couple of the last ones that I posted here i recommend watching them as well because that's what i watched before giving the exam and it really helped me out um like there's instances where the card will say that there they will um they'll be very aggressive or they will will be defensive about certain treatments or something and like for example they might say yeah but I don't want I don't have the time to do something like this for my son because um, I have bills to pay and something like that so how would you you know counter that you need to learn how to counter those uh, conversations so maybe something like 
uh, I understand that uh, it must be hard for you to do this. However, I believe uh, your son's health should be the priority right now because he is going through a, some difficult time and he requires some time home and some, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to do the role play right now, but basically go through those. Um, there are some simple tests you can look at. Uh, and OET website has a lot of cards that you can, you know, do it with your friends or family uh, to practice those. So when they say, say these words, um, there's a lot that OET suggests you do. But to be honest, by the end of my OET journey, I've realized that it's all like you don't have to. As long as uh, you speak clearly, you don't make any grammatical errors in your speech and you're very clear about what you're doing and signposting is very important i think one of these videos are about that if not just check her channel uh she talks about signposting as well and um, that is also important so try to do that signposting basically uh, is like if you're going to ask them about uh, their routine you say that in words okay um thank you for giving me that information um moving on to something else i want to know a little bit more about your routine you know and that's signposting you basically telling them what you're going to do and yeah so do that but obviously go through these um it might help you establish more information about how the exam is tested and what they're looking for uh, change the patient's mind it's critical that it's really important that you know stuff like that okay uh, all right moving on to actually hold on uh, so show empathy empathy is very important definitely do this um, do it once or twice uh, during the conversation uh, as long as you say oh that must have been hard on you or I'm sorry, that must be really uncomfortable for you or I can see that you're in distress um, or I can see that you're uncomfortable. Please let me know if during the uh, our conversation you feel like you need to take a break. Please do not hesitate to let me know. You know, something like that so they understand that uh, you're being empathetic, right? Uh, show that you're listening. I hear you. I understand your concern. And that is quite common in other patients. You know, just reassure them about stuff. On uh, this point, it's don't don't do that. It doesn't help at all. Um, what helps is if you do it and during your practice, it really helps. And I did this during the practice. So it came naturally during the exam. Um, Basically, what I mean by create a flowchart of your conversation is like, okay, first, I'm going to do the introduction. Second, I'm going to uh, find out why they're here, uh, understand what's going on. So you can start off a conversation like, hello, I'm Dr. This. Can you confirm your name for me? Okay. Hello, um, John. I understand that you have been here for um, some discomfort due to this back pain uh, but in your own words can you describe a little bit more about it for me to help you or something like that okay that was just an example don't do that it was a horrible example but this way you're signposting you're being empathetic and all of this stuff that they want okay so intro uh, confirm name ask how he has been feeling since uh, confirm uh, has anyone explained what causes a heart attack? Confirm what he says. Ex uh, explain anyways. <laughs> uh, ask about understanding and concern. This is basically off of one card and not all card will follow this uh, routine. But this is just an example of what I mean. Okay. And do it in your head. Don't write it down because you won't have enough time. You get three, three minutes of time to uh, basically go through the card. You don't need it at the end of it, and at the end of your prep. At the beginning, you will probably read every word and everything. But, um, okay, so during prep, you can ask them, is this the first time I'm meeting you? That's not really necessary. This is, everything I got this is from, like, here. And this, 
my opinions differ now that I've done the exam. You don't really need to ask on any of this. The only thing you might have to ask is the name of someone that's being accompanied. Okay. So say a parent of a child who had asthma attack is coming. You would want to know what their child's name is so that you can use it in a conversation, right? Like say, they say, uh, you ask them, uh, what's your son's name? And they'll tell you it's Ellen, right? So if Ellen is there, you can ask like, okay, so I understand that Ellen is going through this and you, it must have been very scary for you as a parent to see Ellen go through something like this, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that's why you might want to know the name. Uh, or you might want to know the name of the person you're speaking to because uh, it won't give you that in the card. Okay. Uh, remember, you're not marked on finishing the tasks. What you're marked on is how you go through them and how uh, clear were you in your prompts. Okay. However, I do believe, even though they say you're not supposed to, you should be able to because you have more than enough time. So in case you're not able to get through the whole task, uh, all the tasks, it might be because you were wasting time doing something else where it's not required for you to do. Okay. Um, so let's go through one of the samples so you know what it is. Okay medicine let's see task one so they'll give you a role playing card this goes to your friend or whoever is going to be playing it tell them to just follow the card word by word do not add any role play acting to it just be like when i ask you just go through the first line when i ask you again go through the second line you know this is all they have to do and this is your card where you'll be asked and this is basically um a mirror image of what you would see in the actual OET exam. Okay, so find out a reason for the visit. Okay, and you're seeing 45 year old patient, so you would want to ask what their name is uh, during the consultation. So I'm Dr. J. Can you please confirm your name for me? You know, and then they said that infraction happened, and four days ago they were discharged. So you'd be like, um, I understand that you had a heart heart attack. A couple of weeks ago and that must have been hard for you can you please tell me uh in your own words i'll what happened or something like that or how have you been you know find out for the that's how you find it out then reassure the patient about fatigue and all that give a recommendation time scale and this so basically you just go line by line uh find out then reassure i'll i understand that uh you might be feeling a little tired but let me assure you that it's completely normal for someone who has gone through such an event, such as yourself, you know, give recommendation, oh, emphasize. So emphasize importance of exercise. So um, I know you might be afraid of doing the exercises now that you're feeling tired and uh, you don't wanna go through an, another heart attack, but you know, uh, it is important to see that heart, I don't know. It's important that you don't stop the exercise because your heart needs that kind of support from you or something like that. You know, make it up. Then give recommendation for exercise. Uh, I would recommend moderate physical exercise activity. Um, since I have noticed that your recovery has not been complicated, you know. Oh, yeah, right. So emphasize, you can be like, um, I'm really happy that you're thinking about exercise right now after such an event and you know something like that give some positive feedbacks advice uh importance of uh, this explore the patient's job can you please um tell me about what you do at your work give time skill uh for return to work you know it's pretty straightforward you just you don't have to you can just basically paraphrase these and you're good to go um Okay, so that's how that is. Okay. Moving on to the listening portion. Listening portion, you should be able to get above 400 because um, it's very easy, except for maybe part C where you have to really look out for the paraphrasing. Okay, but um, you should be able to get perfect score on part A or maybe 18 out of 
uh, 20, I think it is, or majority, like 80% at least you should be able to get in part A. And I say that because uh, if you are able to secure perfect score in part A and B, um, part C is where I think is uh, more difficult um, in the listening part, especially if it's a monologue that you're uh, going through. So part A is basically fill in the blanks. Okay, so you're just filling in the blanks. Um, so I'll go through this. Let me open up the samples. So listening sample. This one does not differ by profession. It's for everyone. It's the same thing. So listening, it will take you to the on uh, SoundCloud like that. Um, and this is the question paper. This is the answer key. So the question paper here. Uh, it just gives you fill in the blanks. Okay. Um, so number one. So they'll go through that whole thing. Uh, you listen for each and every word that they're asking. So that like injury is sustained lifting what? Okay. So they'll tell you. Um, so, hey doc, I was um, I was doing good but until I uh, was at work and when I tried lifting up heavy boxes. Right. So then you would write heavy boxes here. And that's basically it. And before each line. Uh, they do take a little bit of pause that you have to look out for. So when you hear that pause, um, understand that they're giving you a clue there. Uh, it will come to you as you do m multiple example samples. Okay. Uh, so yeah, all of these are pretty easy. Uh, 1 to 12 and then 12 to 24. That's all that is. That's part A. This is part B. Uh, part B, it's going to be little anecdotes or conversation snippets where you'll be answering these. So this should be also easy for you. Um, there's a little bit of paraphrasing going on. So you have to look out for that and that will come with uh, practice. And then here, it's either an interview or a monologue. Interviews are easier because they go back and forth. And each time the interviewer asks a question, that's another question right here. So you know you have to move on to the next one and then the next one for another question. But if it's a presentation or a monologue, um, you have to look out for that little pause between each uh, question. So when they're talking, uh, when there is a different paragraph where you will be looking at this part rather than this, there will be a obvious pause and then they keep on talking about this. So look out for that. Uh, a tip here. When you're doing these, key, they tell you they give you some time to go through the whole thing. Uh, take the time to look at what the overall picture is, and then just come back here and make note of where there is some space where you can, you know, breathe. So after the first one, you have a couple of lines to take a break, and then when they're talking about symptoms, they will talk about, okay, can I know a little bit more about the symptoms? And that's when this starts. So you won't have that much time between. Uh, line two and three, question two and three. So you have to keep that in mind that you have to really focus in during this time. And then you have a little bit of break after number three. And then four, five, and six is right there. There, So look out for that as well. Uh, definitely look at these little uh, information. So if they're talking about symptoms, keep that in mind. If you're talking about occupation, they want to know what they're working as, what their title is right um are they accountant are they event organizer are they advisor you know something like that they don't want to know that they're doing paperwork all day that's not what they're asking here okay you know, referrals and all that so you'll get a gist of it once you do uh, one or two questions uh samples basically but yeah um a and b should be easier and the part c is the one that takes a little bit of training um so another thing yeah um e2 has a free link uh free samples so if you sign up for e2 uh, website they will let you do i think one or two sample tests just for listening and reading so do that okay um i suggest you do that because it helps and it lets you know uh, what is however I do find that the e2 exam was a little tougher than the original OET ones 
and the OET samples were a little tougher than the actual exam as well. Okay, uh, except for the part C of reading. Um, I would say that part C is the hardest part in the reading. Um, there are a couple of links here you can watch for part A, part B, uh, and C. Go through that. Uh, it does help to let you know how to go through it, basically. Uh, how to approach this part of the exam. Okay. Uh, this is the sample tutorial exam for listening, writing, and reading. Uh, and there are two for medicine and sample test two and four. Okay. Um, so sample two test two for listening, writing, and reading. Don't do it in when you're doing it one by one. So sample test of this is basically the same as this. So you will find the same exam in here and samples test four for listening, writing, reading. Again, same thing. So don't do two and four individually. Do it over here because it will give, go through the whole thing. Okay. And you can find that in the reading section uh, when you go through that. Okay. Uh, but again, uh, so part A. So they give you this, 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 and this, and the question paper for part A is like this, okay? So they ask you, uh, in which text can you find information about A, this, 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 okay? So the texts are placed like D, C, B, and A. So how I would suggest is spend only 15 seconds per text to understand what's going on. That way you don't waste too much time on it, okay? so. How would you do it? So say you were giving this test and time starts. You look at test. Okay, fractures, closed, uh, compound, dislocation, sprain. Okay, text B, simple fractures of limbs, clinical assessment, immediate management, uh, perform physical examination, examining, and this, this, this. Uh, splint, management, x-ray if available, administer, moving on. Uh, text C is drug therapy protocol, morphine, adults only, uh, here, uh, use low dosage, uh, consumer medicine, respiratory depression, uh, if it should occur, give naloxone and text D. Plaster, back slab, arm fracture, rep cotton, uh, ensure any jewelry, immerse, and this, prep fighter. Okay, and now that we did that, uh, in which text can you find the information about procedures for delivering pain relief? So probably it's C because that's where the drug therapy was done right so then you go into okay um you do this for adults this is the recommended dosage okay for pain relief okay um and none of these had okay so there's this part as well management so then you would easily be able to figure out pinpoint where you need to look at basically is what i'm getting at right uh, the procedure to follow which splinting when splinting a fractured limb, right? Then you know when to look at splint the fractured limb right here. So that's B. So you would put B there. Okay, and so on and so forth. So that was part A. So try to get as much marks as you can in part A. So that way um, you don't have to worry about part C as much. Because if you get part A and part B perfect scores there, you're basically passing it. Uh, you don't have to worry about C and whatever you get in C is bonus marks. Uh, so this is part B. Basically, read this, answer this. Read this, answer this. Okay, that's what that is. And part C is this. They give you a whole essay or some kind of stuff, writing, a passage or paragraph or a page from some kind of article. And then they will ask you uh, in the first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph, what happened or something like that, right? So um, uh, for this, I what I did was I look at the question first and then go to the first paragraph so I know what I'm looking for. Uh, pay attention to what they're asking. The writer uses Yvonne Juan Carter's words too, right? So. Focus on that. Don't focus on what the per whole of first paragraph is. That's not what they're asking. They're asking about why he uses these words, his words. Okay. Really pinpoint that. Okay. 
So that's the reading portion. All the samples are here. And uh, you can practice exam on E2 as well uh, by signing up. Uh, so part A is out of 20. You should be able to get at least 18 out of 20 there. Uh, 20 if, if you get 20, that's perfect, right? Uh, six questions here and 16 questions here, okay? Um, 26, right? So you only need four out of 16 if you get 20 plus six, so 26, there you go. So you only need 30 out of 42 to pass and get a B score. You have 45 minutes, uh, 15 minutes to finish uh, part A, and then 45 minutes to finish part B and C. Okay, and then comes the writing. The writing, it's going to be a letter or something. Uh, you can watch these um, videos to explain how it's going to be marked. This is basically out of their uh, OET's website, what they're looking for to mark. What I would suggest is open up a chat GPT, feed them this information, uh, and then ask them to grade your letter that way. Uh, right. And then there are a couple of examples right here that I posted. It's that I found somewhere. Uh, it's a bunch of letter letters, uh, right? Basically giving you the task and the letters. Go through them. You don't have to solve all of them, but at least look at them so you understand the structure and everything. Important stuff is from doctor up to uh, the date of birth. It's going to be the same for all of them. And, and also the last two lines are going to be the same. Okay. Um, so practice the format of it. Okay. And there are sample writing samples on OET website as well. They ask, give you the samples, and then they give you the what the letter should look like as well. Okay, so this is a sample that is a patient like this, and this, and I have linked to all of these videos you should be looking at, and they will teach you how to approach it as well, how you should be look doing these. But the basis of where it starts is you look at the writing task first. And then you go ahead and go through the whole thing. That way, uh, you know what information is important, what's not. Like if you're doing a referral to a physical therapist, they don't need to know uh, their social history. They don't need to know that they're divorced and two children at home, you know, stuff like that. If they're, uh, if you're referring them to a surgeon, for example, what they need to know is that they had a tonsillectomy, maybe, you know, I don't know what the case is, but they had dyspepsia, they had URTI or something like that. So you can pinpoint which one's important for them and which one's not basically, right? Uh, and that's important. And you are only allowed to have around 180 to 200 words uh, in the main body. So when you're doing your writing on Word document, keep a lookout for what it is. So during exam, what I did was I did not write the first part and the last part that I suggested. So I didn't write this up till here and I did not write these. That way, and on computer if you're doing it, it gives you a word count of how much your body is. That way, uh, you know, you're within the word limit and you don't get marks taken off for that. After you're done, you have like 10 minutes left, then you can add in your top part and the bottom part of the structure. Uh, so that's what the writing one is. And um, I added a little bit of thing here. This was before I started prepping for it, just from doing, watching these videos. Okay. Um, so maybe look at it or make up your own ones. So once you're done a sample for each of these, speaking, listening, reading, writing, and you will have an idea of what the exam is then go ahead and book your OET date now. Uh, it took me around four days to prepare for this and two of those days was just understanding what it is and um, collecting the resources and stuff. Um, and the other two, I say two days, but it was mostly like 
one day full and the other day was just a bunch of hours I'm accumulating. So around two hours a day, I guess, uh, for each. Not really. I think it was just four hours for these. And then speaking, I had to do it on a week after. Uh, the speaking, it won't be on the same day as the reading, writing, and listening. Because uh, speaking, you do it on Zoom. Unless you're doing it on paper. I wouldn't suggest doing the exam on paper. And there's a link here. Um, right, right here. Uh, you can watch to understand why reading. I mean, uh, doing the exam on paper is not recommended. Uh, also because the writing it might get too messy. And it's really easy. Like you don't need to have a, your word count. Typing speed should, doesn't need to be more than like 40, basically, or even 20. It's very easy. Don't like there's not that many reasons not to do it on computer, basically. I can't think of any. Okay. Um, yeah. So after you've done that, all of these ones, I've gone through it, do the exam tutorial uh, right here. Medicine. Okay, so one of these. Okay, when you do this, it actually feels like you're the actual exam. Okay, test delivery. Okay, go through it. Understand, because this is what you will. This is basically what it's going to be on the test day. Start test. Okay. Yes, I would like to finish this section. And it starts right here. Okay, and then you just go through it. So do that. Uh understand so you can gauge how much work you need to do and what part you need to do and then you can just go ahead and do that right uh yeah uh if you're doing it on the uh, macbook you need to adjust your resolution to 1920 by 1200 to see the split screen otherwise it's going to be overlaid on uh, another window and it's harder to do the exam that way uh, I believe it's the same for Windows uh, just cycle through the options in Windows for resolution and you can do this while you're on the tutorial page uh, when they do the split screen stuff okay um, that routine there's secret tips um, okay and there's a reddit post yes one, it really helps out. If you have time, just go through this Reddit post. Uh, it helps. And yeah, that's it. Uh, don't look at these until you're done with all the sample papers. This is, I put it here so that you can look at it right before the exam. You go through the structures and what to look out for and what kind of phrasing you need to do. Uh, these are sample papers for the writing. And then there are more collections here for OET. Um, that I collected over the years while running my USMLE veterans group uh, and there's this another one that I found by Dr. Hafiz and then here 50 writing samples and copy of that same thing as well it's the same link that was in the reading portion all right and yeah that's it Good luck with your OET exam. Um, if you have any other uh, questions, just put in the comments or you can reach me at on my Twitter handle. I'm going to post the link to this whole document on the Twitter. So you can find it there. And I'll put in the description below where it is and what hashtag you can use to look for it. All right. Um, see you in the next one.